to discussing multiple sclerosis, which is the most common demyelinating disease, and NMO with antibodies against aquaporin 4. I will show images of acute disseminated encephalomyelitis in this brain bit by bit flock. And as you can see, all these demyelinating diseases are part of a spectrum with some differences. In Adam, there's a monophasic disease with involvement of both white matter and deep gray matter structures. It occurs mainly in pediatric patients with a peak age between 5 and 8 years old. And it is post-infectious or post-vaccination. So there is a peak in Adam in winter and in spring. The white matter lesion, lesions in acute disseminated encephalomyelitis are not as well defined as in multiple sclerosis, as you can see on this image. And they are also located in the deep gray, my, gray matter in contrast to MS. And there is relative sparing of the periventricular region in Adam, plus the lesions are more asymmetric in Adam than in multiple sclerosis on the lower row. Adam and MS do not only differ in presentation, monophasic versus relapsing remitting, dissemination in space and time, and in the location of the lesions, but also on histology. In multiple sclerosis, the demyelination is confluent, whereas in Adam, it's more perivascular, perivenous, as you can see on these images. These are images from a brain biopsy from a 51-year-old woman with Adam. And on this staining, you can see a small structure surrounding the blood vessel and we've discussed this structure before this is the glial limiting membrane and we talked about it in polymicrogyria and in the embryology the glial limiting membrane is located under the pia and it prevents over migration of neurons the glial limiting membrane is also part of the blood brain barrier because as written on the website, the pia continues around the blood vessels. And if you go to the very small vessels, the pia mater turns into the astrocyte and feet. So the glia limitans is located under the astrocyte and feet. In Adam, the inflammation and demyelination might be because of a cross reaction with the infectious agent or it might be that the infection damages and primes the blood brain barrier and this enables the entering of myelin components into the bloodstream and then you get a reaction against these endogenous targets and one of them is myelin oligodendrocyte glycoprotein and I've shown this image before already. And there are also other agents that might be involved in Adam. And if you classify the disease based on the target or on the microscopy or on the antibody, you might classify it as a MAC antibody disease. And it can give a clinical presentation similar to multiple sclerosis or similar to Adam, as you can see in this case. Adam is monophasic and it takes some time to develop. So you do not see it in immunocompromised patients. You need to have a good immune system to make an immune response. And initially patients can present like they have a viral encephalitis. And if you image very early, the MRI looks normal. And then after one to three weeks, the lesions appear simultaneously. And after two months, they have disappeared simultaneously. So it's all monophasic. There's a 
variant that's called MDEM with the multiphasic demyelinating and cephalomyelitis. And there is also a very severe presentation with hemorrhage, which is called hemorrhagic and cephalomyelitis. And in different articles, all these demyelinating syndromes are classified in a spectrum with some variation. But the most important thing is that you have the dissemination in space and time in multiple sclerosis, aquaporin-4 antibodies in NMO, and then there is ADEM, which might be associated with MOC. And I will discuss in the next Brain Bit by Bit Flock the very severe presentation of ADEM, the acute hemorrhagic lacrimal Thanks for watching.